This nefarious scheme shall be undertaken using the now familiar tactics of intimidation, blackmail, and extortion of judicial officers and members of the National Assembly. Threats of recall and removal, threats of life, the threats to life, withdrawal of personal secu security, targeted harassment of family members, including spouses and children, are among the many dangerous and illegal means that security agencies intend to use to achieve their uh, ends. There are also arrangements to apprehend members of parliament of fabricated charges by the Director of Criminal Investigations, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, and the Kenya Revenue Authority in order to wear out the leaders by shuttling uh, them between the courts and police stations in the name of trumped-up charges. The intention is to inflict immense stress and anxiety on affected persons to the point of exhaustion and to inflict actual harm upon others. Some members of parliament have reported credible threats to their lives, to the DCI, yet nothing was done by the way of, of meaningful, uh, meaningful investigations. As if this is not enough, we are aware of plans to eliminate certain members of parliament in retaliation and as a warning to others over their political views. An elite squad was recently disbanded by the DCI after details of plans to harm political leaders leaked out. You will recall that reports of threats to the life of the deputy president have never been investigated for nearly a year. Instead, there has been a lot of diversionary activity and intimidation. As part of the cover-up, one Mr. Dennis Itumbi was arrested and detained at length, only to be charged with obscure, obscure and irrelevant offences. To date, there have been no credible investigation into the veracity of the Hotel Lamada assassination plot claims against the Deputy President. This country only recently emerged from troubled histor history of vicious impunity and resolved political murders and outright assassination in pursuit of corrupt political and other ends. The institutions we look to for protection against violations and excesses are being captured, cannibalized, compromised, and commandeered to reverse into a terrible past. We are being led. The reason why security for vocal and independent leaders has been withdrawn is to make them easier to harm through discrete attempts such as poisoning, apparent accidents, and seemingly ordinary robbery incidents. All this notwithstanding, we must and we do and we will forge ahead without hesitation, fear or regret. We reiterate our commitment to uphold our constitution and defend the rule of law. To this end, we shall not only resist attempts by a selfish cabal of brokers to destroy a, pub a publicly funded national party, but also defend our democracy as vigorously and courageously as necessary to defeat the agents of plunder and mayhem. We shall also protect the integrity and independence of institutions like par Parliament, ODPP, the Inspector General of the National Police and the Judiciary, and fight hard for, this space, for their space and resources to operate optimally and secure the rule of law in our Republic. We take great exception with the manner in which elected parliamentary leaders are being intimidated and purged without any reason. The planned removal of the Deputy President, uh, Deputy Speaker of the Senate, Dr. Kithure, or Professor Kithure Kindiki, which comes hot on the heels of the illegal host of Majority Leader Kipchumba Murkomen and Majority Whip Senator Susan Keheka, is callous, is callous and democratic and is intended to subdue Parliament in its role as it checks the excesses of the, ex of the executive. This is the height of betrayal of individuals who worked tirelessly to not only ensure the Jubilee Party wins the last general election, but guarded the administration in their respective positions while ensuring fairness and upholding the rule of law. We continue to reach out to our friends in the non-governmental sector, locally, and all our friends beyond our borders, including 
those to whom we have written through the foreign missions. We have also alerted human rights watchdog organizations, including the International Criminal Court, to consider investigating many incidents of human rights violations and possibly escalate towards international crimes and crimes against humanity. The consistent violation of human rights, the increase in political intimidation, the use of violence against citizens, the planned assassination of politicians, and the incipient climate, uh, climate of repression, autocratic tyranny, violence, repression, arbitrary contractions of democratic space, and threats to human rights and fundamental freedoms are matters of great concern that must be resisted forcibly and perpetrators ultimately called to account. End of statement. Uh, let me just, just want to add uh, one statement. Kenyans are aware of where we have come from as a country and uh, it took us even the death of uh, very many prominent Kenyans to die for this country to reach where we are here. But we are beginning to adrift back to those days. But if it will take death of the Kenyans who are perceived to be allied to the deputy president, if it will take sacking and intimidation of civil servants who are betrayed by their surname, or rather by the association to get this country back to where it was, so be it. We are ready to put our life online, like so many Kenyans have done it before, so that we can be able to protect our constitution, to be able to protect the struggle that the forefathers put for this country to be where we are here. Kenyans are now beginning to know that what we were saying before, that uh, if the handshake was anchored on a five-point agenda, then Raila Odinga had two more agenda that Uhuru Kenyatta was not aware of. Kenyans are beginning to see that what we are saying was the truth. And I want to ask Kenyans that from today going forth, forward, they should listen to us. They should not listen to the cabals who are hell-bent to take this country back to the days of political assassination, back to the days of uh, uh, interfering with the independence of, uh, of uh, various uh, institutional offices and engaging in things that are completely unconstitutional. Let me add by just explaining to you, because maybe you are lost what's happening in this country. And what's happening is very simple. Because of uh, COVID-19 and because of the economic situation we are in, People who think that they own this country have concluded that they cannot hold a referendum. I have the chairman, my chairman of budget committee here, we can confirm on a Bomoshiri, on a Florence Ball, again, budget committee, because we don't have the money for the referendum. We are even trying to get money for very basic needs. So having realized that, they have decided now that they will bring these BBI changes to parliament. But before they do that, they have to shoot us from the air force, from the air, up there. So all the intimidation, the removal of Murkomen, the removal of Susan Kihika, the removal of Professor Kindiki, it's all geared to intimidate members so that when that report comes to this house, people can vote a certain way. But unfortunately for them, you know the nominated uh, senators are mostly our sisters. When people are just left to intimidate women, what kind of men are they? Because that's all that they have left to do. I know Honorable Kanini Kega has a motion ready for impeachment of the Deputy President William Ruto. And I'm just wondering, and I want to ask Honorable Kanini, Ruto was fired by Uhuru Kenyatta a long time ago. Why are you firing him twice? Because he's not involved even in matters of governance. In the mind of Uhuru Kenyatta, he fired William Ruto a long time ago. William Ruto and Mekubari, and Agojia to Malize Tamietu. So the Kazio in Guinea. So why bother with all those things? Why impeaching somebody who is already impeached by design by Uhuru Kenyatta? It's an exercise in futility. It's a waste of time. Save us that breath. So my message is, if these things are being done to intimidate us, 
as parliament, give up. We are not about to give up. We will not give in to fear. And as we have said, again and again, we would rather die on our feet rather than live on our knees. Hakuna wakati tutakubali kuishi kwa vitisho. Hizi vitisho pia zikuwa zimeelekezwa kwetu about kwa budget, tukubali ile budget ilileto. I am very proud of us who have refused that budget and our chairman made a statement in the, in, the, in the house and now they have brought another budget for stimulus which we will even reject until money is taken to the people not just to buy vehicles and to, to give to rich people in the flowers industry. Selfishly, we will ensure that we put money where it is going to help Monaiti who is suffering, people who are jobless at home, people in the hotel industry who have been retrenched and all over. We are not going, if, the, if these intimidations was to force us a certain way, we are going to do things the right way. To achieve those constitutional changes that they want, you need to that majority. And obviously, there's no way they can get to that in this house. So please, Kujani, to Wonge, to Kotayari, but not by force. No matter how many times you try to intimidate, if you want changes, if those changes are for the good of the country. Now, the committee for Haji has been set aside. Instead, President Uhuru Kenyatta and Aira Odinga have selected their own lawyers who are drafting this report. These Haji were just for allowances only. Flower yeah? They're just flower girls. Now there's a team which is about to force this on all of us. And by the way, one of them, Raila Odinga, is, is our competitor in 2022. Yet he's now drafting the changes that are going to, to determine how the game in which he's a player is going to be played. To make a turn in inch yet. See your mama yamutu. Mtu walega, tutikuwa da goma. Mwaja kidogo, mwaja kidogo mwesimua ongea. Pacha ni ongeza kwa kiswa hili. Naunga mkono wezangu vile wamesema mambo yale yote wamesema ni mambo nyeti na ni mambo inahitaji kufuatiliwa na kuangaliwa na wanakenya lakini ajabu ni kuwa hao wanaofanya hii hawaoni kama wanakenya wanaangalia ukienda mpaka kwa mamboga maswali ni hii hii tunazungumzia hapa ukienda kwa manamba swali ni hii 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 tunazungumzia hapa they are worried na mimi nauliza rais wetu hii mambo ikifika kuharibika itabeba wewe ndio utabeba mzigo kwa sababu it's very expensive kubemba upinzani very expensive wamechukua pesa economy nchi yote they have looted the money upinzani kazi yao ni hiyo hawana kazi nyingine mwananchi saa hii ana shida na tunauliza kama hivi tayote ni ya deputy na president president is the boss why can't he call the deputy because the deputy cannot call the president the president can call the deputy. Na azungumzia wana Kenya awaambie huyu mtu tumekosania hii na hii tusikie so that we can be able to assess. Lakini now that cannot happen. Imelete shida kwa mwananchi chini, kwa senate, kwa assembly, kila pahali kwa watu ya matatu everybody has a problem because our decision can be made within one hour. Within one hour sisi tunajua constitution vile wao zangu wamesema tuifuate it is unconstitutional kuchukua upinzani na ukue wewe ate you can nominate them to be the minister the way you are doing now because now opposition opposition that's what they are fighting for kupoa minister kupoa na it's unconstitutional kwa sababu sisi ni jibili na tuko na mpango yetu you can work with the opposition no problem but kuwaingiza kwa serikali why how ndi wanapanga serikali it is very bad. Ninakubaliana na wenzangu intimidation. Nataka niulize swali mpaka nyinyi mko hapa. Wakati mtu amekunyaganya security, amekunyaganya buduki zako zote. Next. Na hiyo ni serikali. What is next? Is to make sure that they can access you for killing. It's not because of anything else. Yes, why which other reason can maybe be given? They have done of yes. Ili waese kuua vile wanataka. We are ready to die. Siku ya Kenyatta, people died and they went. Siku ya Moi, they went. And now, wako binguni wakifanya kesi na hawa. Wamekutana wote binguni. The case now it is on heaven. Hata wale watafanya hiyo hapa hapa. Wajue, watakuja bunge hapa walana kama wale tumuona. Eh? Na badaye, kesi itaenda wapi? 
Case is the end of Ninguni. And that is the fact. And even us, we shall go one day. And that's why you are saying, the team we are, we have remained totally two things. Kusema ukweli na kujibanga binguni. So if they take us now, let them know we are ready for everything. Lakini intimidation hatuwezi kukubali. Kufinyilia mtu ambaye, hana makosa, yoyote, we cannot agree on that. Let's work together. And the president, we pray for you. Fikiria kudulisha inchi pamoja. And maybe God bless you. Santi nataka kuongeza moja. Mimi nataka kusema kwa pati leader wetu wa jubili kwamba. Sisi kama wajumbe na wananchi wote wa Kenya wale wale piga kura. Tunasikitika sana. Wakati wale tulipambania hii serikali kupatikana. Sisi ndiyo merudi tena kufuato fuato na sisi ndiyo tunaumia. Na watu wetu hafaidi kwa njia yote ile walipiga kura. Mimi nataka kusema kwamba. Hii handshake ambayo imekuja ilikuja na nia mbaya. Handshake ilikuja inatafuta kuingia ndani ya serikali. Na nataka kuambia pati linda wetu kwamba asipo chunga hali inaenda kuwa mbaya zaidi. Kama vile wenzangu wamesema, uwezi chukua watu wa nje kuja kwa serikali ati ndio wanaongoza inchi. Sisi tunapinga hayo maneno na nataka kumshukuru naibu rais kwa sababu ya hii e, ugonjwa wenye unaendelea yeye amejitokeza na anapea wananchi wetu chakula na inaonekana. Hii serikali ni kama sasa hata hatujui inaelekea wapi. Haya. Swali mbili pekee yake pengine. Okay. Uh, naomba niseme hivi. Wa Kenya walienda kwa ballot box, kwa ballot kwa ballot wakapiga kura, wakapigia Rais Uhuru Kenyatta na nanaibu Rais William Ruto. Na Kenya ikaamua ni nani ataongoza inji kwa miaka tano. Na Kenya ikaamua ni nani atakaa upinzani kwa miaka tano. Lakini sahihi tunaona demokrasia imegeuswa. Wale watu ambao Kenya ilikataa ndio wanaongoza saizi. Kwa sababu wamemchukua rais, wamepata vio katika serikali na sasa wanaanza kusettle scores. Kwa sababu huyu alikuwa na rais mpaka tufinye. Huyu alikuwa na rais mpaka tumalize kabla ya masiku ya 2022 kufika. Kwanza demokrasia katika Afrika na demokrasia katika Kenya imefujwa. Kwa sababu wale watu walichaguliwa kuongoza inji kwa chama ya jubili na affiliates wake sio wenye wako kwa uongozi saizi. Ni watu wengine ambao wameletwa ya mlangu ya nyuma na wa Kenya walikataa wale watu. Hiyo ni jambo ya kwanza ambalo tunakataa. Jambo la pili, tunaelewa kuna sheria. Kuna sheria ya inji kama Kenya, kuna sheria katika East Africa, kuna sheria ya Afrika na kuna sheria, kuna, kuna sheria ya dunia, kuna ICC kuna koti za kidunia kwa sababu uwezi finya watu Kenya na wanyamaze watu watafinywa Kenya na watatafuta njia zingine za kujitetea kwa sababu tunaona sasa hizi labda rais Uhuru Kenyatta hana shida na mtu lakini wale watu wameleta karibu Raila Odinga Raila mwenyewe ndiye alipeleka uhuru ICC Raila mwenyewe ndiye alipeleka Ruto ICC Raila sasa hii yako tayari kufanyia mtu yote modha ni hiyo mambo ya ICC tunajua uhuru wa kupeleka mtu ICC kwa hivyo tunamuelewa lakini saa hizi hatutakubali mali Raila alipeleka watu wa ICC asisahau wa kwamba hata sisi tuko na kalamu inaweza andika ICC. Na kama wabunge Raila akiendelea we are documenting all these things zenye makosa inafanyika na mwishowe hata yeye mwenyewe atajipata ICC. Hatutakubali watu kufinywa na watu kunyanyazwa wakati wanatetea inji yao. Mambo ya mtu kuja na kifua ndio wafuruge amani. What will happen with the dust tassels? Kenya wakati dust ta seto tutasema nini? Huyu aliumizwa, huyu aliumizwa, inji inaanza kuwa na mgawanyiko na chuki. Hiyo hatutaki. Lakini waelewe ya kwamba ile kalamu iliandika barua ICC bado iko hapa Kenya, barua inaweza andikwa. Yes. Precisely, you know, uh, when you, the, uh, everything rises and falls on leadership. When institutions are crumbling, when institutions are failing, the blame goes to the top. Everything goes back to the top. So we really do not, I mean, your guess is as good as mine. Who is at the top? Let me add here, so there's no guesswork. This country is officially under a dictatorship. 
My friend, I'm only an MP for five years. <laughs> Was I dead before I became an MP? <laughs> No, 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 it's not about that. It's about honesty, my friend uh, Sam. It's about honesty. It's not about president and deputy president. It's about righteousness and evil. Mungu na shetani. Instead of planning to help the country to fight COVID-19, you call senators to discuss about an individual, deputy president. 